Stretch right to the tips of your fingers. It's not just a stretch of the body, it's a stretch of the energy, extension of the energy. Two, three, four, five. We're in the Kadagash. One, two, three, four, five. Every move has a start and a finish. Two, three, four. Five. So, albeit it's very fluid and continuous, there's a start and there is a finish. Thank you. One, two, three. Again, you're extending energy outwards, you're not just opening the wrists up. One, two, three, four, five. Check. We kind of get rid of them. whatever's been on going on today that might not bring you here fresh. And we slow it down, we slow it down. So the movement becomes tiny, 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 but the vibration continues. Oh. I'll do this horizontally so you get a better idea of my movement. My arms are on my legs and uh, I'm moving from my center. That's connected to my shoulder and my arms. It's not my arms reaching forward, the whole body takes my arms through. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, Three, four, five. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, and follow. Make the right words up. And uh, you go to the left with the same principle. Your arm is nice and relaxed. Then you're Sliding to the left, pushing the feet to the right. One, two, three, four, 
five, one, two, three, four, five. Let's go back. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go to the right. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, two, hold. Just let the weight of your body hang forward. Back. Bring the soles of your feet together. Straighten your back. Keep the weight from your knees just coming down. And then when you feel nice and comfortable and centered, start to introduce some movement. Now, holding your toes, but not pulling them back towards your head, just holding them lightly. You're going to be bowing forward as if you wanted to put your nose on, on your toes. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One more set. One, Two, three, four, five, three. Yoga pose. Now put your forehead on the ground. Rest your tongue on your thighs. And just let your back stretch a little bit and open up. Take time to breathe here. Right into the base of your back. You can feel it expand. <coughs> Last one. Okay. Slide your nose along the floor. And arch up. Come back. Move forward. And up. Try and keep your hips low. And back. Forward. And up. Forward. And up. Toes under, into a bridge, hold back, lower yourself down to your forearms, come up on the right, come up on the left, go down on the right, go down on the left, up on the left, up on the right. Push back to the soles of your feet by the ground. Let your head hang low. Stretch your back out. Touch out those tendons in the back of the leg and the muscle. And breathe. Put your hands back to your feet. Place them under your feet and hang. And breathe. Release your hands and slowly come to the 
this two little bit of blood does get the blood flowing and that energy flowing. So one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, it's not some weird variation where you have to turn to the side. I'm just trying to give you an angle on my posture. If you see me doing this, I'm probably making a mistake. Don't copy that. I want you hopefully to see that my back is relatively straight in this exercise. Shifting your weight from front to back and keeping your back straight in the process. For me, as a core movement in Aikido is a habit you really need to encourage. As soon as you need to bend your back into a, um, an angle, a forward angle, a triangular type shape, you're usually a bit overbalanced. So if I can use Kate, it goes with what you need to correct. Oh, that's perfect. That's, that's probably too far. If I gently push, I see this taper off. Find where you think it's good for you. Same test, and she's good. Okay, so maybe just a just a tiny, tiny degree further forward. Okay, so she didn't shift much, but you don't need to shift much. You need to, that's fine, that's okay. You need to develop this inner sensitivity where you're listening to your body, and as soon as you start leaning over the precipice, your body's saying, uh uh, not good, not good, not good. Ah, oh, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, so start paying attention to your body. Good. Okay, that's as warmed up as I want us to be for now. Uh, we're going to go right back to basics today um, because I want to help people build the building that they they need. Okay. So everything that you choose to put your energies into, if you want to make progress. You have to know what progress means for you. So, um, in Aikido terms, what do you want out of Aikido? To bring it back to the building analogy, what type of building are you trying to build? Because until you know that, you don't know what you're going to need to end up with the finished product. Once you've worked out what you're trying to build or where you're trying to go, you need to build a roadmap or an architectural plan that shows you how you're going to put this thing together. So if it's a roadmap, it's I need to go here and then I need to go there and then I'm going to stay the night, I'll have to book a hotel, and then I'll need a ship, and then there's a train, and after that I end up getting to where I want to go. And in Aikido terms, we need to know what the essential building blocks are. So um, if you're watching this as a recording, pause the recording and write down what you think the essential roadblocks to build, where, to, to, to get where you want to go are going to be. Okay? If we're building a building, what will be the essential ingredients you need to build the building? It might be bricks and concrete and wood and slates. They might be your essential ingredients. Unless you've got those, you've got no chance at all. It is a journey as well. How far is it? Where do I need to stop overnight? What vehicles, what methods of transport am I going to need? You've got to put the fundamentals in place. Otherwise, you're not going to get there. And maybe tonight we'll go right back to basics and we'll look at what I think are the fundamentals for putting the vehicle together. And they're fundamental, and if you, when you know the fundamentals, you can hang everything else off that. You can build the building once you've got the frame and the foundation set and a roof overhead. You can start putting in the windows, you can start plastering the walls, you can start putting in the wiring. But without the basic framework, it's really, really difficult. So we're going to bring the basic framework. And you need to embed these, I think. Well, I need to embed, I have embedded them in my journey. 
They don't have to be your framework, but I'm suggesting it's a really powerful framework that you can build a lot of. Okay, so what's our basic, the most basic thing we need to do? We need to learn to be centered. Okay, it sounds simple. A lot of people who don't do IT they don't know what centering means, and they don't necessarily know how to, to find it, even if they know what it means. So we have a basic methodology, okay? So I ask Caitlin to put her finger a couple of inches below her navel. And I ask her to focus on that place. And I ask her to put her hand by her side, but to keep her mind focused on where she was touching. And I then put my hand gently on her shoulder, and I'm going to gently extend my head towards her center. And I can go the same from behind as well, which is good. If I ask her to take her mind off the center and think where I'm touching now, same test, over she goes. From behind, same test, over she goes. So I now have a choice. I can decide which one of those two states do I prefer to be in, which seems to give me the most opportunity of doing what I need to do. And I would suggest to you that it's the being centered one that offers more opportunities to stay there or to move off in the control zone. Yeah. So that's our first one to be centered. Okay. Our second one is um, to be positively relaxed. What do we mean by positive relaxation? What does relaxation mean to you? Is it just a time where you kind of all floppy? The muscles are all soft, or is it a more engaged state? Okay, so I want you to have really, really soft muscles, to be floppy, not collapsed, but floppy, but kind of not really thinking of anything at all. Kind of dead mind. And again, she's very easy to move. All right, arm out. Uh, soft muscle, floppy, dead mind, easy to move. Okay, now we're going to be engaged with this. Okay, so you can stand there just to start with, and um, you're going to think of something that, that makes you feel good. Okay, so it's a great session of IP, there, where everything's going perfectly, or whatever you like. Okay, so she's really feeling alive now, I hope. The same soft muscle. Now, she's solid. Keep that thought in your mind. So it's a very engaged state. It's how you feel when you walk into a party with people you really like and you feel comfortable with. It's how you feel when maybe you're dancing and really up for it, uh, or when you're playing a sport that you love and you're playing really well. It's anything that has you totally involved in the moment, but totally aware as well of what's going on in the Our third rule is to stay very grounded. So I should put them back a bit better. And you can hear on your Um so I'll just do a neutral test. This is pretty good. Okay. So now if I ask you to think of your shoulders, I can move you. Did you shift weight and weigh less this time? <laughs> I didn't think so. I didn't think so either. But I can shift you. Now I want you to make yourself aware of all your connection with the floor. So just to become aware of what your toes are touching, what the back of your feet is touching, along with your calves, and whatever the front of your legs would be, calves, just to be aware of all of them. I cannot tell you how solid she's become. There was a fraction of movement on the neutral test. And now she's focused on this. Bye. Cannot shift her. If I touch there, she'll go. So as soon as I move her mind from that grounded state, she becomes vulnerable. So 
We need to keep our feet on the ground in, in a certain sense, but we need to be alive and aware as well. That's our third rule. And our fourth rule is to uh, extend our awareness into the world. But I could say extend key. But then a lot of people just won't get that. So it's where you put your intention. It's where you put your focus. It's where you put your curiosity. These are other words that describe a state which puts you out there somewhere instead of in here somewhere. Okay? So, uh, and you might be thinking of one of the characters on that uh, poster on the wall. Very sorry. On the left hand side. Really very sorry. Okay, so this time, not focusing on that, we're just going to focus on what you feel for me. You're curious about what I'm doing. Really? Okay. Now you're going to put your attention on um, your home. <laughs> okay, you're going to reach out as if you were pointing your home out to me in your mind. So you can see your home in your mind's eye. Breathe. Uh, so any of those things you can use to describe it, but it's very much really a state of being involved. Okay, so uh, when you're on your own, it's being aware of what's going on within you. Are you comfortable today? Is your back aching? Um, how are you feeling around it? It's noticing these things. Because when you notice them, you've got a chance to change them. But if you ignore them, no, you've only been rubbish all day long because you didn't want to pay any attention in the first place. And when you're on the map with somebody else, kind of noticing, I'm bored a little bit. Noticing is how far I'm not. I can look at the screen actually, that's a cheat. But if she did attach me, maybe I didn't see it. <laughs> but it's much better if I'm, oh, there's a person who's like, oh, she's going to attack me. I can do something more about that when I'm out there in the world than if I'm just standing there and I'm kind of switched off. So, um, and what's going on around you isn't always good, but if you don't pay any attention, it'll be a lot worse. Okay. So, there's four basic rules for finding your best self. Okay, these are the rules for coordination of mind and body. They are a translation of what Tony says in Key Idea. Okay, uh, I've tried to make them a little bit more westernized, uh, but essentially that's what they are. That's where they're from. And um, they're all worth working on. Okay, then we have our rules of Aikido, principles of Aikido. So basically, uh, the first thing is, I need to be extending the key. I need to have that awareness of what's going on around me. Because as I just said, if I switch off and I'm engaged with you, I'm very open to what's going on with her. My focus needs to be all round. Right? So it's not a hard glare, it's soft. So if she comes to me fine, but if I hear, if I feel some movement there, or from Laura who's, who's appeared over here, I'm aware of it and I can engage with that as well. Okay, that's our first rule. It's fairly obvious why we want to do that. Second rule is we have to respect our partner's attack or accept it, really. So it's no good me saying that when she attacks, no, you can't do that. Well, that might work. It might. <laughs> but it might not. Okay. If she wants to attack me, there's nothing I can do. That's, that's her intention. So I have to expect that she's going to attack me. But I don't have to be there. I don't have to stop the attack. I just let it happen. Lots of ways I can let it happen. I don't have to be in the way. I can join with it. But I don't try to block the energy in any way. I receive it fully, right? So that's really important. Once we've received it fully, we have to, that gives us an understanding of what's going on. Oh, this person's coming forward to attack me. I better get out of the way. Knowledge is power, okay? So opening yourself and having that awareness and accepting what's going on and fully understanding it you can begin to come up with a solution. 
And the solution is the game from partners to place. So now I'm here. Okay, this is one place where we're together. So can you get away from me now? Not so much, right? And I can start to take control of the situation. In other ways, I'm in my partner's place. We're kind of matching. Okay, we're not side by side now, but we've met in the middle. She's going up, I'm going up. And I found the tipping point. So they ground it in the center. This is much harder to shift as I try to shift her. Am I open? Could you hit me? Yes, you can hit me. Okay. So I keep going up. Could you hit me now? Not that poorly going to <laughs> So I keep going up until we find that place where she's ready to go. Okay. Now I'm going to move the charge from here. Okay. So the last thing is. Be positive in what we do. Uh, I'm not quite sure what happens now. Uh, forward or back. She's hit me 10 times by now. Just be confident. Okay, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But uh, going half hearted sort of thing never leads anywhere very good. Okay, so give it a go. If you make a mistake, you've got something to learn. So you should celebrate that because. It's pointing at something that wasn't quite right. And if you spend enough time, you'll find what it is that isn't right. These building blocks of finding your best self, which then help you engage with the world at large. See, I'm taking off from that. I'm not just talking about a, a training partner, or I'm not just talking about the martial aspect here. I'm talking about how we engage with the world. So, uh, if a train is coming towards me, it's quite good if I'm aware of that. It's quite good that I know that the train is much heavier and faster than I am, and that I probably haven't got the strength to stop it. So I need to get out of the way and step out of the tracks, as opposed to saying, "No, oh, you shall not pass." Now, you have to recognise what's going on. And these it's a really simple idea, but these will help you steer your way through problems as they arise in life. You'll come up with the right solution. Sometimes it's to, to walk away until you've got more tools in your kit box to solve the problem, maybe in a relationship. Um, sometimes it's to really enter the problem and solve it then and there. But you need to be able to be sensitive enough to know what's possible and what's not possible in any particular point in time. Okay, so that's enough of that. Uh, we're going to start from here. Get one hand would be nice. Okay, so we're doing um, a mudadori. This is the middle of the chest. And in many ways, I think this is uh, harder to do from basic than it is from movement. Okay, because what I'm doing is she can be hitting me. It's very easy to get physical and try to remember. And she's doing a really good job of just. Hanging on. And while my muscles are trying to remove her here, she's got all these weapons available that you know, I'm distracted from and I can't stop. So the first thing is I want to create a bit of a different relationship between us. So I bring my front foot back. Notice she hasn't moved yet. I haven't put the sole of my foot on the ground. When I do that, She'll bring her forward. So I don't want her to feel this. Okay. As I did that, I would have done that. Okay. So you'll notice how her head went back, which was very sensible of because she doesn't want me to do that. <laughs> now we've created a bit of tension between us. There's a dynamic tension here. So she's not as focused on this, she's focused on the fact that she now has to be aware of my attack. And this is the moment I say. <laughs> This is a temi, isn't it? Yes, it's in a temi. And here, when I come back to here, I need to come right to the tip. Or I need to brush down. That's how I should have done. Okay. Soon as I get physical, it becomes tough. Perhaps in some ways it's easier to practice one finger because there's no chance that one finger is going to be this straight. And just brush down. Okay. So 
You need a lot of confidence and belief. This fist is bigger than my finger. I couldn't do it with two hands. Now, how on earth can I do it with one finger? I'm never going to be able to do it with one finger. Guess what? I can't do it with one finger. I'm not doing this with the confidence I just told you is important. Now I believe I can do it. I really do. I, I just need to put my finger down. I always put when I drop my finger, it just goes down. So what's the problem? Of course it's going to work. With that mindset, I get a completely different result. So when you get stuck, as I promise you will when you try this, step away. And notice what it feels like just to drop your hand down to your side. And then just do the exercise. Like stop worrying about her and concentrate on how you feel. Right. Now she has a filter is cheap and she wants to come up. So we're going to do what you can do. So key components. Put that hand up as you settle, you drop your hand. When you drop your hand, you do not lose connection with your partner. So you don't want this. You want to be here so you can feel the bounce from your partner. She doesn't want to be there. See, she resets every time. She's sensible. She's learned what center is. She always wants to return to center. So I'm going to ride that. And I'm going to follow her upward movement. And when we get upward movement, she wants to go where? After up is always a down. So we have a lateral movement because she's falling over there. But the only thing you're thinking about is the down, up, down. And staying in contact with your partner here. So you two have a go. You're going to see that. Yeah, I'll come back to this. Behind this line. Just remember, if you stop at this place for too long, they are going to reset enough to hit you. So ultimately, it needs to be one full movement. But, you know, we're going to break it down. So there's one, there's two, there's three. And it's okay to do point to point Aikido while you're looking to get the movements right. But ultimately, without that flow, there come points where, in reality, you're wondering. Okay. That's on the right. Your turn, Caitlin. Don't get too hung up on the forward, and then the, the, the down. That other hand, actually. Yeah, that's the one. Right up. That's shown this before. But now I, I can't control the height of the person that I'm working with. Sometimes I'll be shorter, sometimes I'll, I'll be taller. Um, so it's a unique situation, and I have to adjust. Uh, accordingly. Okay, so I'm the shorter one here. She's the taller one. Okay. I'm trying to reach up to where I normally would like to go. So I make myself very vulnerable. Thank you, demonstrated there. Thank you very much. Okay, so I have to make sure I'm comfortable. Is she stretched? No, no, she could go right up there. But if I go any further, I'm stretched and I'm vulnerable. But even here, you can see, 
Now you can get some movement here. Right, because I'm extending up. All right, now she wants to go down. So now I can enter. Yep. Nobody can control where your mind goes. If you're short on someone, yes, you've got limitations. The only limitation of where your mind goes is you. If you think you can't do something, you can't do something. If you don't think you can extend to the heavens, you can't extend to the heavens. You just have to believe it. Okay. One, so from basic, it's not, not basic, it's much easier because you never let them grab you. She definitely doesn't want to stay here. She wants to go up. So I follow that. I'm going to get to that. This time the rock is much better for me because I'm taller than her. So if I go as tall as I want, it's still a problem because she can't hold on. So I'm going to find where she can go. She's not as high as I can go, that's as high as she can and stay connected. And I want us to stay connected and focused on that. Because if that frees up, I'd never do this as well. But here, it's better for me. She's on that bridge now, so she wants to go, my boy. When we drop her hand down, do you know what? It never, so it's standing, it never goes lower than there because her arms are only so long. They're not made of elastic, they will not reach the floor. You don't think anyway. I haven't so far in all our practice. And if I drop my hand and my mind to where her hand goes, that's the result. Can you stand up? Yes, she can. This time I'm going to drop it to the floor. Okay, better result. This time I'm going to go through the floor. Yeah. Better result still. So where we put our mind makes a big difference. Focus on the prize. Okay, how do we go? Big ups, big downs. Ooh, <laughs> okay, we've got a new rule in this club. If you say sorry, it's 10p in the box. That's the new Christmas drinking pot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sit down to completion and show all the exit. One more. All right, so if we're seeing this technique through, she should pin her partner. And when she's done that, this is where she should exit. Why that side? Because she's six foot away from where she'll be standing up from. Exit this way, she's right next door to her feet, not so smart. So be marshally aware. Thank you, Matthew. Behind the line, keeping the back. Okay, so she's got to Okay, yeah, great. Now the learning opportunities, right? So we've got her to there. Okay. So what do we need to help to go down to the ground? Could you shoot the tiger to you? Could you get closer? Oh wow, yeah. You brought her in and you brought her right next to your legs. Now think down and walk forward. Okay, okay. So this time, just because cool, um, we weren't making that up, okay. So you'll put a little gap in between you. Okay, so won't quite be touching your legs. You won't quite have her touch you like that, and then we'll try. And then you'll adjust it again and see if it gets in here. So you might as well place the camera. So a little bit and, in, and in the oh. tummy is about moving the mind, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes. Distraction. Yeah. <laughs> it's intention. Exactly that. So, um, 
Obviously, martially, you know, I've turned defense into attack. You know, this is vulnerable. Uh, and if we were doing a martial art, it would just be a punch to the face, probably, unless she's really alert. Okay, but now all her attention is focused on keeping me out rather than attacking this point. Because we're doing um, Aikido, we're kind of nice. We just need we just need this pattern. We need just to see that reaction because that's going to give you enough time to focus, get back to here and focus on that. Okay. So when she takes here, I hope, yeah, looks pretty good. Her posture's pretty good. Now I want to uh, spoil that. I want to get her into this kind of posture because you know we all all things at that time. Yeah. So you're right, this is uh, sending intention to divert her thought from the attack to defense, and then I can start to move things forward. Kind of really suggesting. Wow, okay. So I'm just going to pause there and uh, let's go into gallery mode for a second and check if there are any questions. Yes, uh, I have a question. Excellent. Uh, usually when, when uh, OK is grabbing your gi, his intention is to it's to pull you towards him, isn't it? Or uh, uh, what would happen? Just like if you follow what he's asking for. Okay, um, I wouldn't say it necessarily is to pull you in. It could be to push you over, but it could be to pull you in. Okay, so you don't mind. <laughs> it could be to do that. Hopefully, hopefully that is showed on the screen. It could be that. Or well, it could be that to pull her onto a punch or a knife. Absolutely. Um, so I mean, we must never get to the yeah, allow our partner to get to the point where they're able to express that bit of the technique or that bit of the technique. Right? We have to move. So this is why we stop it here to practice moving, uh, getting it off from here. The reality is. I'm going to let her hold. If I never get her grab to pull or push me, it's much easier on this technique. It's much easier on the move than it is from basic. This part of getting someone off when they've actually grabbed you, that's quite tricky. You, know, you can make this really, really tough on yourself. It takes a lot of confidence to relax enough to remove that. But that's what we want to practice. We want to make this a bit different. We want to get this, this feeling of there's nothing in the way, even when there is something in the way. We just join with it and go. And if you imagine a, a large log sitting on, on a river, and it's just sitting there on the surface, and a surge of water comes along, it just floats on the water because of the energy that's coming its way. You go and get the water and say, oh no, there's a big log in the river, I'll never get past that. It just carries on flowing. Of course it does, and the log goes. You're using gravity as well, aren't you? Your arm uh, naturally going downwards. It's like uh, the force of gravity, really. Okay, so we can focus on any single one of those four basic principles that we talked about right at the beginning. Okay, so I can think of my centre. I'm thinking of my centre now. Okay, I can think of being grounded and letting my, my energy ground as well. Uh, and if I'm going to use the energy, I'm extending key. Uh, or what's the last one? Uh, where are we going to relax? Centered. I'm extending key. Yes, there are you know, all of us. Just be, I, I can just, as long as I'm positive, can be relaxed. But if I'm tense, I count to this door. Oh, this is okay. I can do this. I don't know how you. Of course I can do it. Yeah. Any, I can focus on anyone because the rule is if you focus on one, you get three for free. In the end, you don't focus on any of them because it's so built into your, your nature and the way that you use your body. One of them, you're, you're using one, but you're using them all at the same time. When you're learning, it's quite helpful to focus on one of those ideas. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, any more questions? I will take that as a no. I'll just put us back into um, speaker mode. Okay, 
So let's uh, take a look here. And coming up on this here. Okay, so through here. Really tough. Okay, so we don't need that at all. The line of energy at this point, as she comes in to grab at least, maybe she wants to pull me back. But to grab me, her energy has to be coming this way towards me. So what I do is I encourage her and I go with it. I'm going to show you I'm, I'm deliberately you know, starting from over here and I'm brushing along. Okay, I'm going with that. Smart and observe it. You'll notice that as I was doing this with my hand, I also did that with my feet. And then I hold her to me. So I don't try and get rid of her. I say, ah, oh, thanks for this. This is really kind. That's a lovely gift. Let me give you one. And I go back towards her now. Now what you might see is that when I go back to her, instead of her hand being here, it's now there. I'm still holding her to me, aren't I? Yes. Yes, this is my prize. And then I can do my Nikki at the time. So we normally want for Nikki O, we want to create this shape. We don't want that shape. We'd be doing Coco Gaish from here, wouldn't we? Here's our Nikki O. Okay. But when she grabs, it's the opposite way. So I need to get it back into Nikki O. If I try and turn this wrist and she stays centered, uh, 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 uh. so I've broken my rule of being empathetic and understanding where she wants to go and accepting it. Initially, she wants to go this way, so I say, fine, let's go that way. Now she's not centered, she wants to go the other way, so I say, fine, let's go that way. Too late now, because it's gone. I'll turn that wrist. And we can, we can do all of it. So, I can stand right front. I can have this dog leg shape. That's kind of classic, isn't it? Okay, and I can be pushing down hard there and hurting. It's horrible. But I don't. I just extend. She moves and I follow. Now, and you move your hips. Um, no, I don't do anything to her wrist. I just hold on to it dearly. Like it's the well, you best move that she's ever given me. No, I mean, you oh, move I your hips. You. Say again, Bianca. Um, you're moving your hips, your center, um, rather than just yes. your upper body. As she moves, I follow. Yeah, so I send. She's moving. I'm following. So my key stays with her, my, my presence stays with her until the movement's finished. If I don't do that, she'll come back up. She comes straight back up. As soon as I let her, I take my presence away. She's still with her. I'm still with her. I'm still with her. You can't see it anymore, but I was still with her. I should have done it further down. Okay, perform. Stay with her, stay with her, stay with her. Still focus on her. Still focus on her. Still focus on her. Okay. Uh, are we happy with the description of the movement so far? Yes. Okay, so what we want to see is it put into action by the two better practitioners. Off you go, girls. Behind the line, if you will. Remember, your key needs to go like a metronome this way, that way. But in order to go back to front, what do your hips do? They create some rotation in this. So you don't need to focus on that. You could. Hold it to you. So I know we don't all work in pictures. 
But for me, this is this moment where we hold them to us. It's like plugging into the electric mains. Yeah, you can't have a plug halfway into a wall and expect the light to shine. You've got to push it all the way in. So you really need to plug it in and you take it to your centre. And if you want, it doesn't work for you. Think about the feeling of holding, keeping something very dear close to you. It's a warm feeling. It's not one of, this is mine, you can't have it. It's very much a, wow, this is a wonderful gift. Thank you so much. A sense of gratitude to it. How do you feel when you're expressing gratitude? It should be a warm, maybe. Maybe you notice what's going on in your, a little bit more than in your heart. Maybe that's what you feel. But whatever it is, notice what you feel when you have gratitude. And that's the condition of what you bring to the mat. Okay, so you're definitely trying to get the right? So, um, don't do that. So, it's quite a show, but it's kind of, there's a certain amount of slackness in the system here, okay? This is, this is, I can pull it, pull it out, I can pull it in, okay? What I want to do is plug it in. So, I've got this really strong sense of connection here. You know, I am, there's a physical component to this. I can, I can, I can feel the front part of her knuckle here, but now I can, I can feel all of this bit as opposed to just that bit. I want to make as much skin touch as possible, right? There. Okay. So that really to do that, I have to energetically bring this towards me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that. Okay, try. Oh, I tell you to try. Okay, I'll give you my hand. Okay, you're going to plug into your chest rather than your shoulders. You must turn on your foot on your chest. Really plug it in. Now, I can you have it in there. Thank you. That's a bit better. Now, just extend it. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Keep, keep it up. Where do you want me to go? Uh, that's good. Okay, so when um, Caitlin first did that, it was coming back towards me, so I could feel this. Uh, it's going to be hard to kind of plug it properly. Okay, so but there's nothing making me go down. Her intention has to come through me and down. Yes, to make me go down. No. Just going to use it. Feels quite tight here, but anything making me go down? I, there are lots of ways I can do this. I can go straight to her center, but find a nice way is to take it down the plug hole. You can play some nice energy games here. Go straight to the center and down to the floor. To the head and down. To the head and the far shoulder and down the back leg. You could do that. Any, any of those is kind of fun to play with. But she has no clue what I'm doing now because I haven't plugged it in properly. It's loose. The wiring is faulty. Make the connection. Ah, we get a response straight away. Make the connection. She's dear to me. I know that's hard to imagine. All right, come down. What are you talking about? <laughs> so straight back at her. So now step forward. Hold it to you and just bend. Yeah, good. Okay, and so if you're trying to get what am I doing? It's front to back. Just well, while that's going on, one, two, just hold it. Two. And then here, the next step. Forwards, 
Então, se você tiver um inquérito, tinha que ser um inquérito. Pois, por razão de mim, pois, eu acho que por razão de mim, eu acho que eu falei, pois. Yes, thank you. Okay, so she's back and all, so you know your energy's going. So the UK is the should be mirroring what they're feeling. So if you've got an UK that's doing this, that's because your energy's going in that direction. If they're heading towards the floor, that's because your energy should be going to the floor, right? Just plug me in. Okay, good. I'm not going to make it easy for you. You know all that. Which plug me in better? Which your center? Ah. <laughs> okay, so tell them what you did when I said plug me in better. I could feel, technically, I could feel my shoulders still up. So I had to. Relax that arm completely. Very good, because we need to be grounded, yes. right? Back to first principles. And then draw, pretty much, draw your energy into me. Right, where did you draw it to? I drew it back into my center. Right. Then. Okay. Felt completely different. Just start with it, don't do anything much. Okay. This feels tight. But I can still kind of, but you're still not doing anything. I can still disengage with this. Now make it yours. Now I come. Now we're together. You go. Excellent. Other side. No, no, this doesn't be easy. Very good. So normally, if we're doing it here, you know, we might talk about doing it from the shoulder. We have a big advantage because we can wrap the shoulder around to get the bend we want. But as an exercise, you can try plugging it into anywhere on my rib cage. I can't really get my rib cage around that. And I'll concentrate on plugging it in and extending. Uh, <laughs> plug it into my forearm. Try to my thigh. That's not so easy. I'm going to work on that one. You can plug it in anywhere. You just take it to your center. Then, where do you want your attention to go? Where would you like us to go? But if you don't know where they want to go, if, if you if you don't know where they want to go, it probably means they don't want to go anywhere with it until you give them the intention. So uh, when we're in practice mode, just basics, the person really often isn't giving you much forwards or back. So it's up to me to add the intention as to the direction. When they're coming in at speed to grab me, I don't, they've given you plenty of intention. Then you can use that. Okay, you have to go. You're about to. I really plug it in, believe it. If you don't believe it, it's not going to happen. Yes, nice, 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 nice. So, uh, you know, we are like pictures, we like feelings. So, what does it feel like to have someone really close to us? You know, kind of warm, tender feeling, you know, another person that we, we care for, uh, connecting with us. Yeah, this is nice. So maybe that's what works better for you. Maybe it went the other way too, but you know, try and come back to feelings if my pictures don't work. Okay, come on, come on. Yeah, that's it then. 
Yeah, go. Yes. Nice. I think mean, you can legitimately say, you know, we've kind of moved away from my keto technique here. You know, no one's going to attack you by putting their hand on your thigh. But what you're practicing is a principle. And the principles are what make your Aikido work. So it's this coming together with somebody else and being able to make more energy from the two of you than you've just got on your own. It's the principle you're practicing. Yeah, we'll put it. <laughs> My bottles? <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Oh, body parts. <laughs> one of my favorite boys in the UK, actually. Okay, let's move on. Sure. Okay, so uh, this time I'm going to become dry. So you kind of start similarly. This brush is down, and I brush to the side here. What I want to do is I want to get into here the jointy bit, the wristy bit. Okay, it's pushing that as you extend it. That one doing it good, that one doing it good, that one doing good. So I'm between the joints. On the joints here, I, I could tap here when it would be doing something else. But I want to be cut to This is the place I need to insert my energy. Okay. So let's be clear. If I try and physically break this, Come on. For me, it's like I'm cutting through a knife to butter. Or if you imagine this the flow of water, I put a damn gate down so there's no energy here now. If there's no energy here, of course I can move the arm. So I have these pictures, this feeling in my body, that's how I want it to work. I just visualize it for this, right? This stays nice and light. As soon as I introduce tension, it's not working. One, to keep her mind elsewhere. Two, to here. Now I've opened her up. I've come into my partner's position, but we come around through 180. We're here. I brought her from there to here. So now she wants to take a step forward. Look how our posture adjusts when she takes a step forward. So I've got a problem here. So, I know she wants to do that, but I don't want her to get back to posture. So I move as well. That's how we do it. You know, um, one big problem I find with Uki, if they anticipate the movement and uh, they don't really connect, you know, they, they just anticipate it because they've been performing it for so long. But it, feels, it feels like it doesn't work really then, you know. Okay, fine, good point. So I've just shown you the way I want to do the technique. Do you think it's possible that she might know what I'm going to do, having just told you what I'm going to do? Of course she does. So if she wants to stop that, so you know, as soon as I can come to this, she's basically pushing that way, it's not going to work. But if I'm a smart, I feel it, and then I go that way. Right? So just because you're told this is the normal way to solve the problem. If the problem changes, you've got to do something else. Yeah, right. So just, you know, who case they always play honest? They sometimes are a bit ego there, or they're just a bit fearful and they try to stop it. What she's doing is she's extending the energy forwards. If I don't do anything, or well, well, she can pull me and punch, or whatever she wants to do. So she's giving me energy the whole time. And if I get to make a mistake, She's able to take advantage. As long as she's giving me the energy, yeah, I can I can lead that. And once I'm starting to lead it, she's off balance. So she doesn't have much chance to come up with an alternative strategy. Her strategy is to get back into balance. That's the only one yeah. that can save her. Does that make sense, Bianca? Yeah, it does, yeah. But yeah. Should we try this? Behind the line.
So it's a little bit here. It's a bit precise. It makes it a bit. It's a bit more uh, laser like. One given there. Blotchy wrist as opposed to a delicate little finger energy. A little bit cramped here, too. It's easier to do this. And I begin to relax into it. There, I'm reaching over a bit, and I know my shoulders come here. Very surprised I said good. You often are good. <laughs> nice. Okay, so. Okay, you've got her down. She's still fairly. Engaged in that forward movement, you take a long step forward and keep them up. You really want to hear, you want to take them away from you. Yeah, she's the one that's exposed, so she knows she's really in trouble here. So make sure that the down turns into an out because then you've got all sorts of possibilities. No, um, Quentin, what I meant also, um, my experience is that sometimes you can move without you having done anything. So they anticipate the movement, they know the technique, and they just fall over. Yeah. Exactly. Any, I think any, it, I haven't got a different answer, but I, I think the fact is that if somebody is anticipating and countering when they know damn well you're trying to practice that technique, they're just cheating you and they're cheating themselves of the proper yeah. experience. And if they cheat, then you have to adjust and follow their energy, right? So, um, just on a simple, simple basic terms, if I ask Caitlin to push me backwards, right? Okay. Um, so I've asked her to push me back, push, push me backwards, but she pulls. It's no good me trying to go backwards. Nothing that I was trying to show before is going to work because I have not blended or respected what she wants to do. I have to respect for whatever reason. She has chosen to do something different to what the teacher asked, right? So if she chooses to pull instead of push, I'm going to answer. I'm going to try some other technique. And then I say, oh, yeah, didn't the teacher said push. Oh, yeah, can we try that now? <laughs> and sometimes, as I'm sure you've experienced, you, you'll find you kids get cross when you, when you gently try to um, correct them. <laughs> Okay, just yeah. mouth shut and wait till the teacher comes out because you can't learn the technique you're being asked to learn if you don't get the right energy. I think it's about connecting. If you're not connected very well, 
then right. it's not possible to do the technique properly. And they just fall over without you having done anything. Right. So if, I, if she's pulling me and I'm trying to go back, that idea of connection is completely broken, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I have to, whatever I, I, I she might have heard the words, but if I mean something different to her, I have to go with what I feel, not what I was instructed should happen. Because life's like that. You know, I expect when I go out on the street and I say hello to somebody, for the person to say hello back, not punch me in the face. But if they try to punch me in the face, I have to be ready for that and deal with it. I can't say, but hang on, you were supposed to say hello back. I have to deal with the fact that they want to punch me in the face. Um, you know, so that is, it's just as true on the map. Just because they've been told to do something doesn't mean to say that that's what they're doing. Um, you can practice that to your satisfaction as well. You know, I'll put that in the open mind. And dare I say it, but we have two, two ladies on the map and two ladies on the screen. I expect you've experienced blokes who just don't like being thrown by women. So they kind of do anything they can do to stop it working. Because you throwing them is a bit, you know, that's yeah. not, it's their egos, is it? Yeah, it's true, yeah. yeah, yeah so unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately, that's the reality that you're having to deal with. Just notice it. Uh, and adopt an appropriate strategy, which may well be to be patient until the teacher comes around, or it may be to go with the energy you feel rather than the one they've been told to give you. Yeah. I'm already out as I'm going down. I don't want to go one, two. I want it to be one sweep. That's nicer. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, take me in the pot. <laughs> oh, it's a trick. It's not enough. I'm thinking about it. We've got a drink. <laughs> Trying to do Kazlash when you're really extended like this is never good. Okay, so you have to adopt one of two strategies, four of two strategies. I could do that. Yeah. Come closer, come closer. Yeah. Or I can make her come closer. So I can bring my arm to me. As it's connected to her and I'm plugged into her, she'll come closer to me. But if my arm comes closer to me, you'll notice it also comes closer to the floor. And that's very difficult for her to stand. If I come closer to her, it's right up. If I look at this lovely going down to the ground with the top to express the energy. If I'm thinking of her hand, cannot work. This is where we come back to our basic principle. Am I extending key now? No, I'm just pushing. I need to extend key to the floor. One of those two. Anything. Okay, so because we're trying to learn, and this is not necessarily your, your party piece, it's my party piece, okay? Um, just get used to being comfortable here. Okay? So look at her body shape. So I'm holding, I've got the same shape as the, I'm holding my little finger in the fist of this, my hands on top, but she's fine with this. And there is no way I can take it down to the ground 
one more year. This time, she gets the weight of that. This time, she gets the weight of that. Hey, that's a different shape you're looking at. And I've done the job before I've started, just by grounding here. Yeah. It wasn't feel like to ground. It feels like falling. So the only reason my arms are not falling to my side at this point is because she's holding me up. But no, I think I can do it. So when things don't go right, it's always good to come back to the principle that's going to be most easy to relate to to solve the problem. So thinking down, working with gravity, being grounded, that's a good one for the problem we had there. Maybe I could have used extending key. Uh, I could have done it easily. Just borrow her again. Equally, I could have said, right, just connect here and think about lowering your centre. Yep. So I, I'm not really worrying about her, but I am connected to her. So when my centre drops, her centre drops. Oh, I just think about, oh, feel really relaxing. So it could be relaxation. You know, know your partner and or student and find the, the key that's going to unlock the move for them. And then just confuse them, throw in a wild card. And if that one is working, try lowering the center. <laughs> okay, so we might start by lowering the center, and it's a big movement. Right, I drop all this way, and then I might make it a slightly smaller movement, and then I might make it smaller movement, and then in the end, I'm bouncing my center down, but I'm not actually moving directly so. So you got your mind in your own center. I think when I was explaining it that way. Yeah, yeah it's I'm more right. of a it's more of a strategic use of the mind. Yeah. So you know, I, I might focus on awareness and extending the key. I might focus on center. I might focus on relaxing the body. I might focus on grounding and using gravity. They all end up with the same result. Mm. It's just which one can the student relate to? Okay, so did you notice that her arm is quite horizontal? So then it's kind of a bit more, it's a bit more physical when you do that. I want to so drop this, get your elbow pointing at the floor, and then I don't have to force it. Why do I tell you these things? <laughs> You're out of range here, right? Oh, it's stupid, isn't it? Yes, I'm oh, stupid. <laughs> Okay, so now uh, you are going to focus, you're not allowed to do that hand, you have to do it with that hand. Okay, now in the end, my elbow is pointing towards the floor. All of this brings me to her until my elbow is pointing at the floor. And then she can just chuck, drain everything through that. Turn her forward. Yes, she might find out. Who knows? Yes, that was a smart thing to do. She didn't want to come to you. You went her that for. Give me some space. Okay, so what happened there was this elbow linked up with the center. 
This is the strongest place we can go. So from here, it's tough. But you have to go through the center to the ground. That's the most easy way to affect it. So if I stop there, the movement stops. But you go through it. Just like drilling, drilling for oil or extending a laser to the ground, doesn't matter. What the more or less in my center. But centers are always involved, they're always useful. Try that again. Showing you where your energy is going. Yeah. Yeah. The first line is here. It helps from there. So if my mind stops where your elbow meets your body, it feels like I hit a brick wall. I can't get through it. So I've already gone through it. So there is a physical barrier here, but there's no mental barrier. I've already gone through. And then I just let the body follow. So you could paint a picture in your mind. Um, I can't really think of a feeling for this one, I'm afraid. Yeah. So the shape of my arm is the same as you made it before, but you've got a very different response. So is that any of that? Okay, try out the paper, please. Yes. <laughs> so again, just just thinking of te teaching methodology, right? Okay. Someone doesn't like pictures, and I was struggling to give you a feeling. Well, then I'll revert to something. Else. Just say down. The word will do it for you. Does your brain compute what down is? I think it does. How many years we uh, have? 23. 23. 23 years of people saying down. We know exactly what down means. So when you say down, it brings out something in your body that relates to down. Ah, it works. Down does. Yes, I believe. He's down really on the ground. <laughs> yes. And you don't have to say it out loud. It can be a little tune going on in your head. Then you have the tune, though. Down, 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 <laughs> well, do you know what? Just maybe thinking of a tune that really feels good. So you think think of your favorite song and you're singing that in your head, and the feeling will come out of your body. There are lots of ways you can access this positive energy. 
know, you do it at times. You know, maybe we can look down and put a bit, bit of bright music to kind of pull you up. Yeah, but philosophy, maybe you focus on your English. Maybe you go for a walk in the countryside and just get absorbed in nature. Many ways in which people have a, a kind of getting out of the fog. Right? Just, just remind yourself when you need them what the tools are to get the job done. So thinking of a, a, a jolly jingle in your head isn't very like you know, is it? But it works. It's right. It works. Yep. Yep. Okay. So. One, two, and now we're doing a young two, one, two. We don't want to get her down because she wants to come up, so we get her up. When she goes up, she wants to go down, so we go down. That's the lovely rhythms of these types of movements. There's a down, there's an up, there's a down, there's an up, there's a down. And with every partner, the dance is slightly different. The components and the steps are very similar, but the feel of the dance is different because you get different energy from everybody and different energies from the same people depending on where they're at that particular day. Notice we always come back to the same rules, the same basic rules of grounding, of center, of extending, of being relaxed. And we might talk about music, or we might talk about feel, we might talk about focus or intention or working from our center or uh, whatever. But you know, it's almost the same rules. <laughs> Down. 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 If you try to keep it down and she got me up, it, it doesn't work. So you let her fully express her up, and now she'll go down. Up. I'm meeting her up with my down, and you know, it's a bit uncomfortable, isn't it? Yep. And there's a clash. So Maybe I can overwhelm her, probably in that position I can. Not the other thing that you and I practice. So if she wants to go down, let that happen. Let it come up, now that shows it work. Just use the bouncing ball to create the feeling you want. Don't get in the way. Very nice. It's a very nice phrase that when we uh, are working with others, it's not working well. Very often it's because we got in the way. We let our ego get in the way of the, the, the result we're looking for. Well, we went out of feeling and connection and we came back to results. We're not looking for results, we're looking for a process. The results will come from the process. <laughs> Um, okay. So I was having much too much fun, it seems, but I can't believe it's half past eight already. Um, so uh, apologies if I uh, kept you waiting. Uh, sorry for that. Um, but hopefully, you've got something useful. So thank you very much. We're just going to finish you. Thank you, Laura and Kathleen. Okay. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> Any questions? Bye,